Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress, and welcome to today's webinar, Revamp Your Existing WinForms Apps, presented by DevExpress Technical Evangelist, Don Wibier. In this session, see how Don takes an existing WinForms application using an older version of DevExpress and turns it into a modern looking app. He'll show you how to use the latest UI features that come with Windows 10 by upgrading your application to the latest DevExpress version. And you'll learn how to enable specific fluent design features on existing controls and how to replace certain controls with more modern equivalents to get the eye candy your end users will appreciate. This session is being recorded and it will be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today. And we will send the link to the recording in a follow-up email as well. We will also do a live Q&A at the end of this presentation. Just type your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel at any time throughout the broadcast. All right, thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Don. Thanks, Amanda. And uh, again, welcome everybody. Today's webinar is uh, going to be about like the, well, oldest UI technology for .NET. Uh, which is WinForms. And um, I guess before we continue, there is, uh, I guess, one question that I, uh, that I need to, uh, to answer. And that is obviously, is WinForms dead? And well, before I answer that, let me uh, give a bit of an explanation here. So WinForms was introduced with .NET version 1 back in 2002. And that means that it is running for almost two decades. It was the first desktop UI technology for .NET, and it still runs on the latest .NET framework, version 4.7.2. And while Microsoft tried to bury WinForms for at least five years when it announced that WinForms was put into maintenance mode, and that was on build in 2014, we realized with DevExpress that it wasn't fair to our customers, since still even today, at least half of the corporate business is making the money with this technology. You can imagine the massive investments which have been made in WinForms application development. Instead of going with Microsoft, we at DevExpress decided to uh, go another way and we improved and even innovated our WinForms controls. And well, fortunately, Microsoft realized that WinForms will not go away and they recently announced that WinForms will be available with .NET Core version three and it will be open source as well. So the answer, is no. WinForms is far from that. So before we actually go into a bit of revamping, um, let me talk a bit about classic versus modern UI. Um, well, if I show you this picture, you'll probably all remember this. Um, this is one of the Microsoft Office versions. Uh, to be precisely, it's 2003. And what was obviously very refreshing at that particular point in time is the nice customizable toolbars with some 3D effects, um, some gradients here and there. And well, back then it looked pretty awesome. But I mean, if we take a look at the current version of, in this example, Microsoft Excel 2019, yeah, it looks really slick. I mean, they got rid of pretty much all of the shadows, there are no gradients, uh, and it, it looks, yeah, pretty much like a piece of paper, basically, with some nice colors and stuff. And yeah, I mean, if you want to refresh your, the UI of your application, I mean, the guideline to go is uh, to take a look at the latest version of Microsoft Office, because those guys spend a lot of time putting in the latest UI events. And um, yeah, it, it actually has uh, quite a bunch of details in the controls and, uh, and in the UI of those applications. But then there is something else which is, um, yeah, an, an important thing to mention. So there are some technical implications with modern hardware. Uh, if you, would combine that with WinForms. So 
let me uh, let me talk a bit about that as well. So, for instance, we at this at, at at this moment in time, we have some pretty powerful desktop hardware. Even if it is like a light desktop, it will still have a nice CPU in there, some memory. Windows will run very smoothly on it, and most important, it also has a graphics adapter which has a GPU on it. If you compare the hardware from an average workstation and you compare that with a workstation from back in 2003, it's a massive difference. And one of the other things uh, is that we obviously are used to having bigger screens. I mean, uh, full HD is already moderate and a lot of people are already using 4K screens and even we have up to 8K screens as well. So 8K means eight times the resolution of full HD. And you can imagine that it is quite a bunch of pixels on a screen. And this is also where one of the problems arises with WinForms. WinForms uses GDI Plus for rendering your application on a screen. And GDI Plus is a pixel-based rendering mechanism. Well, if you take a look at the previous bullet, up to 8K, I mean, eight times full HD, that is quite a bunch of pixels. And I did mention something about the powerful desktop hardware, and that is that the every workstation has a decent video card with a GPU in there. And yeah, a GPU is not very specialized in rendering pixel-based things on the screen. It's it's more optimized to use uh, vectors and all kind of. It's it's very good in all kinds of mathematical. Uh, uh, problems. So yeah, pixel-based rendering doesn't really use your hardware. Um, and then because WinForms is uh, pixel-based, um, if you have an 8K screen or even a 4K screen, or in my personal situation, I've got a notebook which has a full HD screen, it's got a 13-inch screen, um, and I have the zoom level in Windows turned up to 125%. Otherwise, it's it's quite dense altogether, and it's very very small. Well, if you do that with a typical WinForms application, you'll encounter some issues with proper rendering on con uh, of controls on those high DPI screens, specifically when zooming on the OS level. So one of the other things I'd like to discuss is why would you upgrade to Dev Express? Well, the first thing is that we have in, I mean, WinForms itself, it does have some limited high DPI support, but that was only recently introduced. Uh, but all of the WinForms controls from Dev Express, they have high DPI support. So that means that we will check uh, your screen, we will check your settings and we'll make sure that even if you zoomed in on OS level, that it will render properly. Um, and obviously you'll see that our controls make use of the latest MS Windows UI trends. I mean, with every version of Windows, they make it a bit slicker, they make it a bit smoother, and we'll make sure that our controls can look the same as, as the OS itself. And then one of the really technical benefits, and this is something that your end users will appreciate, is that we have created our own DirectX rendering engine, um, which is used on a number of WinForms controls. So instead of using pixel-based rendering, we are actually using hardware accelerated rendering on, um, at this stage, a whole bunch of controls. So if you are having a data grid in your application, we'll use hardware accelerated rendering as well for the tree list, dial control, the range control, and we have the accordion control, the chart control, the scheduler, and the PDF control in uh, version 80.2. And the cool thing with the PDF control is that we are actually, because of this hardware accelerated rendering, 
we are now able to display this PDF file more accurate because we can use things like gradients, uh, shadows, and all that kind of stuff that comes with PDF because PDF is also vector-based. And in our upcoming 19.1 release, we'll have support for the pivot grid as well. We are running some final tests on that. We're doing some, some, some last minute fixes here and there, but the pivot grid will also benefit from the DirectX rendering engine. So these are a couple of reasons why you should upgrade to DevExpress 18.2. Well, I, uh, the title of this webinar is Revamping Your Existing WinForms Apps. Um, and well, there are quite a bunch of things you can do, and I could even talk for like three hours about this, going through all the controls and, and all the specific things. Um, but I have decided that I would talk about this in uh, three stages. So the revamping process, you can, you can do it in three stages, and you can even decide whether you want to do only one stage or you want to go all the way. And so the first one is a quick and easy one. It's just upgrade. And okay, for some of you, that might be a bit problematic, but we always try to use the upgrade tool and to make the upgrading process as smooth as possible. And for all of you who do encounter problems during the project conversion tool, uh, we'll give you some feedback what was going on during the conversion, why it couldn't be converted. And we also have an extensive list of what's new and breaking changes with every release that we do. So if you encounter any issues with the upgrading by using our project conversion tool, please go to our website and see if there is something there um, yeah, which describes your problem and how to solve it. And if if it isn't available, file a ticket at our support because those guys can help you out and they'll find out what's going on here. But do upgrade. So the second one I would call is a moderate revamping process. And that will only cost you a bit of time here and there. It's not really like redoing a whole bunch of things, but uh, it'll take some time. But I'll, I'll get to that a bit later. And the third one is if you want to go all the way. So uh, if you check out the apps that are installed with Windows 10, like the mail client or the agenda, that is like all the way. And that is actually something that you could achieve by using the DevExpress controls. But as you read already on the bullet, um, that might need some reorganization of your UI. Um, and how uh, why? Well, I made a slide for that as well. Um, maybe you remember our demo, which is our mail demo. It's from an older version, and maybe your application looks like this right now. I mean, it's looking nice, yeah, but maybe you want to change it over in something which looks like this, and this is a more recent version that is uh, from the same mail demo. And you'll see quite a bunch of changes here. So for instance, on the old picture on the left side, we have a ribbon control and we have a, um, a nav bar control. Uh, while on the right side, the whole ribbon has gone. And this is exactly why I've meant about this might need some consideration in reorganizing your UI because you need to have that functionality exposed somewhere else in your UI. But I'll give you a couple of ideas on that as well. All right, so let's start with the revamping stage one, uh, which is the quick and easy one. Well, and to save you a bit of time, I have already the, uh, a, a project that I converted to 80.1, uh, 80.2. And I mean, it's a simple application, it only has one form, um, and the idea is to show you how you can gradually freshen up your UI. And so in this case, we have a form, it contains a grid, it contains a couple of other things, 
And uh, if I would run the application, it will, well, maybe look something like your application as well. It doesn't have a lot of logic behind it, uh, but that's also not, um, that it, it is not important. All right, so what we see here is um, we have a grid and we have a uh, nav bar and we have a calendar. And um, if I close down the application, I can go to uh, the solution explorer. And this is one of the very nice features which makes a lot of difference. If I would right click the solution I can go to the DevExpress project settings and what we have then is um, a number of options that I have been talking about. So the first thing I'm going to start with is um, the, the DPI awareness section right here. It is turned on by default uh, if you upgrade to the latest version, but this will actually enable a couple of things under the hood to make sure that controls are being rendered properly uh, and not depending on zoom levels in the OS. One of the other things uh, that is interesting here is um, use DirectX. And if I tick this box, there is a pretty much all the controls that I mentioned on the slides will be using DirectX for rendering. There are a couple of controls um, which we currently enabled to use DirectX and you have to do a couple of manual things to turn that feature on. But again, we have excellent documentation and it explains everything about that. But I would definitely put this box on. And then one of the other things uh, which is worth to mention is the last one. It's the touch options. I won't go too far into this because I'm not dealing with a touch screen anyway. But if you turn on this feature, the uh, touch UI uh, makes sure that elements get more padding and, and, and they're slightly bigger so you can actually touch them. Yeah, so a cell of a grid will be a bit bigger. It's got some padding around the text inside the cell and a couple of other things as well. Uh, but again, I'm not working with the touch UI right now, so I'll leave it for what it is. Um, one of the other things which is really interesting here is our skinning options. And this is one of the quick and easy things. Because you might be aware of the fact that we have a lot of skins already shipped with the Express WinForms controls. But there are actually two that I would like to point out here. The first one is the Office 2019 Colorful. And what you'll see is that there is also a second option here, which is a skin palette. So here you can actually, I mean, this skin, this skin is, is inspired by Microsoft Office. So that's why it's called Office 2019 Colorful. And you can actually determine whether you want your application to be inspired by Word or Excel or PowerPoint, uh, I think this one is inspired by OneNote, I guess. And so you can actually change the color scheme of that particular skin. But I would certainly recommend picking one other skin, and that is the Bergier one, because we have quite an amount of uh, skin palettes here. So there is something in here for pretty much everybody. And uh, well, obviously uh, the corporate colors of DevExpress are orange with some black and some white. So I will definitely go for this one, but you can pick another one. And the last thing that you can specify here is if you want to have a font which was uh, specified in the skin or you can have any of the modern fonts which come with Windows or you can actually select the Windows default. And so if a customer changes the font on the, on the Windows, uh, it will use that font as well. Once I hit apply and I switch over to the design, you'll see that it is already by design time visible what we selected here. 
And so um, one of the other things that you might have noticed is that also the chat box has a really nice and slick look and feel, just like uh, the latest uh, Office version. And once I run the application again, well, <coughs> it wouldn't be a surprise that it will look pretty nice. So if I would maximize the window to get rid of Visual Studio, uh, you'll see that this, this works quite nice. So, yeah, this is basically uh, the quick and easy one. Oh, and I do want to point out one other thing. Let me run it again. Um, maybe you've noticed that we have some open file dialogs as well as some save file dialog and a uh, folder select uh, dialog uh, with the DevExpress controls. If you use those controls, they will be skinned as well. So if I would now hit this button, you will see that my open file, file dialog, which would be normally something from the uh, Windows OS, it has been uh, skinned as well, so it looks pretty nice and pretty slick here. So I'd say that that is like a quick and easy thing to do once the upgrade proceeds as planned. Um, and I have actually stated this down in the slide deck, so I have an overview of what I actually just did. So I upgraded the project, I applied a vector skin. That is, one, that is one of the things which I didn't mention before, but the Office 2019 and the Bajir skins are vector-based skins, and that means that they scale very well, uh, no matter how high the DPI is on your screen or the zoom level, etc. They are vector-based. Um, one of the other things that I did was I uh, checked the box to use DirectX. I uh, checked the DPI aware one. And if you're working for a touch device, then you could determine or you could decide to go for the use touch UI checkbox as well. All right, so let's go a step further uh, by uh, doing some of the moderate changes in your application. Um, one of the things that we've also been doing is, uh, is again, an awesome feature, and that is that instead of using bitmaps, let me switch over to the Visual Studio. Instead of using bitmaps on this ribbon control or even on this nav bar, we can use SVG icons instead. And you might be aware of the fact that SVG icons are also vector-based icons. So it means that they can scale really nice because it's not pixel-based like the bitmaps that you see right now, uh, but it's vector-based. Uh, yeah, so this is one of the examples that could take a bit more time because you have to change all those icons. And yes, you have to change them yourself pretty much. But fortunately, we have some very nice design time feature for that. So actually, I could go to this one. I'll go to the properties and I'll go to the uh, image options. And you'll see a tab with DX vector images. <clears throat> and these are the images that we used before. And we also have the Visual Studio image picker. But if I would want to, so, to change this one, to a vector-based image, I can just pick it from here. But with a lot of images, it's quite a bit of work, so we've decided to put in a really cool trick here, and that is if I would select a window and I will go to um, the task menu of this form, we have an image picker here. And what we can do now is it will save you a reasonable amount of time. I can just grab any of those images and drag them here. And I can get another one and put it in here. And so this was concerning the nav bar, but I could also go to the remote control. So basically everything which has been marked down now, I can change. I can just drop the image on there and with this 
my uh, my bitmap has been replaced by a vector image and so a very nice and convenient way of doing so and let me do this one as well and well I guess you'll believe that I can do the rest as well, but I'll save a bit of time here by um, by stopping this this feature. But again, a very nice design time feature which saves you quite a bit of work uh, when you want to insert one of those uh, vector icons that we deliver with the wind forms controls. So another thing that we can do is um, this this nav bar. I guess my guess is it's being used pretty much because it was introduced in one of the older office versions but these days um, there is like a newer version of this control so I'd like to replace this control uh, from a nav bar to an accordion control um, and fortunately with this control it is uh, quite simple because if I activate this task menu there is an item here which says convert to accordion control you will get a message that uh, because the events on the accordion control and the nav bar have different signatures it's impossible for us to like map over those um, events as well so this is the alert that you'll get if I hit yes because I don't have any events coded in here what you'll see is a much smoother version of this uh, nav bar or yeah the nav bar which is now an accordion control it does have a couple of more features as well but i'll get to that a bit later because um another thing that i would like to point out and that yeah i would consider that to be um moderate as well is i would like to change this form I want to, to change this form to a fluent form and uh, this is something to do I'll talk a bit about that uh, in a minute the fluent form is basically the forms that you see with the apps that are shipped with Windows like the mail client and the one that you saw on the screenshot on the right side it looks very crisp very smooth um, and we can do that with our WinForms applications as well and I mean the interesting thing here to mention is that Obviously, those apps are being created with UWP, and we are just doing the same stuff with WinForm. So that is that is pretty nice. I can convert this form by activating this uh, this form uh, task menu, and I can say convert it to a fluent design form. Um, there is an interesting thing going on now because a fluid form typically has a uh, accordion control and in most scenarios it will have a hamburger menu which will expand or collapse the accordion control and that is one of the things which is extra in the accordion control so I want to enable that hamburger menu on my existing one and yeah you'll see a couple of things changing uh, for instance this accordion control has now been turned into black and um, uh, the realignment uh, with the ribbon control that will probably fail at runtime but we'll get over that a bit later so let me see if I run the application right now um, so what you'll see is a form that is looking pretty slick and it it looks pretty fresh and again we have the accordion control which has been replaced uh, which replaced the uh, nav bar with the hamburger menu and typically this should align to the full height of the form but that brings us to something else which is this ribbon control altogether I'll talk about that a bit later because that is in the next stage of revamping and one of the other things that you can turn on pretty quickly is um, something about the scroll bar in this grid so here you have a fixed scroll bar and uh, well it just works as it worked before but if you would take a good look at the fluent design uh, apps 
then you'll see that they use a slightly different scroll bar. And fortunately, we can turn that feature on by just putting in one line of code. We turn that on globally, and the way that that works um, is by going to your um, a program file. So let me go to the Solution Explorer here, and I put it in comments already. If you would specify this uh, Windows form settings, which is from DevExpress, it's one of the DevExpress settings. Um, if you put that scroll UI mode into scroll UI mode fluent, let me show you what's happening. The scroll bar in the grid. Um, it's gone by now, you see? But once I hover with the mouse over this grid control, you'll see this bar on the right side. You see it? And once I hover over this bar, it gets bigger. And I can now actually drag the thumbnail down. Yeah, or I can uh, scroll as well. And you'll see that the scroll bar gets smaller and it lays over like the most right cell. So another very Nice little detail which comes with like the Fluent design um, specifications. And as you can see, we can use that just like that. All right, so there are obviously quite some more things we can do in the moderate section, but I've decided to point out the, the most or the nicest ones and uh, the things that, that don't cost too much time. So with this, um, let me get back to the slide and uh, summarize the things that I did. <clears throat> so I switched from bitmap to SVG icons. Uh, I converted the navbar to the accordion control. I uh, showed you how to use the fluent forms. In the next stage, I'll show you some more about it. Um, and I turned on the Fluent scroll bar. Well, you might have been wondering, okay, so what is all that stuff about Fluent design and even acrylic? I, if I remember correctly, I, I called that also only once in this webinar already. Well, this Fluent design is the way that, that Windows 10 is looking right now. Very slick, very sleek. What is the acrylic feature? Well, because I'm not sure if the webinar software is able to display the acrylic feature in my application that I am demoing right now, I have decided to put in a couple of screenshots uh, because the GoToWebinar software is, is trimming down on quality and a couple of effects and stuff. And I'm pretty sure that you won't see the acrylic effect in my demo app. So. Acrylic is basically what you see here. The white pane, which is slightly transparent, is the form, is your application form, and in this case on a light theme in Windows. While if I would use a dark theme, it will be dark, but again, it will be slightly transparent, and this is actually where acrylic is all about. Um, and this also brings us to revamping stage three, and that is all the way. So we're going to put in a couple of more tricks here, because uh, what I already did, I turned on this uh, scroll mode, the fluent scroll mode. If I go back to the, um, to the form, we can put in a couple of more tricks. And one of the things uh, that we can do is um, this calendar control on the right side. We can make that turn into a fluent calendar control as well. And the way how we can do that is uh, by, for instance, putting it, and this is one of the minor things in the reorganization of your UI. Uh, I can add an item here. And uh, once I have that item, I can add a content container. And before I put this calendar control on there, I make it slightly bigger so you'll have a better view of what's going on. And I can make the content pane also slightly bigger. 
And now I can cut the control out of this toolbox and paste it in right here. Nothing exciting yet. Um, we'll not be using this one anymore, so I can just uh, get rid of it. But there are a couple of things I can do now with this calendar control. And one of the things that I'm going to do is um, I will set a calendar view which is one of the properties and I will change that over to fluent which is a new feature that comes with 18.2 on a number of controls once I do that you'll immediately see that it is taking over the colors and the styles of its parent um, and one of the other things like I mentioned before not all the controls are using direct X by default the hardware rendering but um, for this control for instance there is a property which is called the use direct x paint and i have to turn it on here like this and to make it even more slicker we can actually turn off the borders as well because we don't want no borders in our fluent uh, application and uh, the cool thing what's going on right now if i would run the application after i make one of the other i want to point out one of the other things on the form as well which i didn't do before remember the fluent form there is actually an option here which states enable acrylic accent and this is like the transparent the, the slightly transparent stuff that you see, uh, that you saw in the picture on the on the slide deck, you can turn it on or you can turn it off. Um, but once I now run the application, you'll get this really, really awesome calendar control. Watch what's happening now. Once the application has been started up, well, here let me. Um, make the form slightly bigger well you all already see the toolbars going on and watch when I hover over this calendar control and this is something typically which comes with um, fluent design and acrylic and stuff so this actually looks like a flashlight which is pointing on a certain number in the in the calendar control so a very nice little detail and well, you saw what I did. I put this one on the accordion. I set the properties and you'll have this awesome, good looking calendar control. And so one of the things which is really worth pointing out. One of the other things we can do is actually, um, there is this other control. Maybe you've seen it before on, uh, on Outlook or something. Um, we have this control as well, and it works very nice with uh, the accordion. Because the accordion has like these collapsible panes that you just saw, but um, if you take a good look at uh, Office, for instance, and then Outlook to be precisely, they have something underneath here, the bottom of this, uh, of this panel. And we can actually do this on a couple of ways. One of the things that we can do is I can uh, change the display mode to footer. And then you'll have icons for all of those sections. You see? But I can make this a bit nicer, actually. So if I would change this back to default, we have this other control. And that control is called the Office Navigation Bar. And in this case, uh, the alignment in the design time in the designer is not really appropriate, just as we saw with the ribbon control. But at runtime, you'll see that it works perfectly. Um, one of the things I can do now is I can connect this one to the accordion. So if I remove these once. I can uh, change one of the properties here, um, which is the um, navigation client. So if I would select the navigation client and change that one to accordion control, 
what you already see is that it takes over all the groups you see and then i can disable one of the properties of the accordion control so for instance i don't want to have the uh, group expand buttons and once i run the application now what you'll see is that we have functionality quite similar to uh, to office actually or to outlook to be precisely so here we have the sales section if i would now click on employees you'll see that it will slide over to the employees uh, group in the accordion control and i can go to the dashboard which was empty but you'll get the idea and even if i collapse this and I'll go to one of those, you'll see that it is actually changing on the side. You see, so it's changing over. This, this, out, this office navigation bar also includes the stuff that you'll see in Outlook, like peaking tool tips with what's going on on that particular pane and stuff like that. And yeah, you can go completely mad on all the features that this, this nice UI uh, control has to offer. But again, this was implemented pretty quickly, but yeah, it does change your UI. So that's why I would put it in the revamping stage three. Um, and then there is one thing that is still bugging me slightly, and that is actually the ribbon control. Yeah, because the ribbon control, yeah, it doesn't really fit in here. Sure, we can change a couple of things here and there. So for instance, we can uh, choose a different ribbon style like uh, Office 2019 is already being used because of the skin. Uh, but I could switch it over to something like this, but this is still not something that I would prefer with these kind of UIs. Um, so we can change this UI by, for instance, remove this completely. And this is going to be a scary action. If you have a lot of actions on your ribbon control, I totally understand it. But I'll, I'm going to show you something else instead. So let me get rid of this. Um, and one of the things that comes with the Fluent Forms is I can add buttons here. Yeah, so I can make a button here, which I will call Open. And I had another button, which is uh, Safe, for instance. And another really slick one. I could actually put in a toggle switch here. Um, I will call this activate alerts and I'll show you what that does in a minute. Again, I want to have some images on there so I can just open the image picker again and I'll go to, um, I can even search for open. Here you are. I'll drop it on here. I'll go to save in this case. And let me put that one here. And I will leave that as it is. So one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm going to buy one of the events that I already had on the checkbox in the toolbox. And this also brings us to one of the last things that I want to show you. Um, let me run the application again and what you'll see now is something which looks totally fresh. It looks very slick and uh, yeah, I mean, I still have those actions here, but again, this, I can't tell you if you should go this way because this obviously depends on your UI. If you are using a ribbon control with like a gazillion actions on it, because that's what a ribbon control was designed for, yeah, then this might not work for you, but you might be able to find something in between. Yeah, so, uh, but again, just something to show you uh, what is possible with with these controls. So I was mentioning this, uh, this slider, and this is one of the things I'd like to show as well, um, which is again a very cool feature. I put something in here. Um, 
I think that I just bound like the the, the incorrect uh, event to this. Let me uh, check this again because I didn't want to open the uh, file open dialog. Obviously, I wanted to do something else. Um, now I'll do that slightly later. So let me remove this one. Um, one of the other things that we have is a um, a notification alert. You might have seen that before. Um, it's something that zooms or that appears in the bottom of the screen. And I disabled that for now, but let me go to the code and show you how that works and how that looks. So um, let me uh, quickly enable this feature here. So I'll do timer one. Enabled is true. Now, what is happening now if I run the application again? Watch the right bottom corner of my screen. After a couple of seconds, uh, there will be some notifications popping up there. Let me get rid of officials. Uh, yeah, you see it? Here it is. And this might be something that you've been using already, but we can take this a step further as well because. Windows 10 and actually Windows 8 as well, they have their own notification system. Um, and we actually created something that's, that allows you to actually use that notification instead. So how are we going to do that? Well, let me first close down the application here and get back to the designer. One of the things that we have is a Toast Notification Manager. Here it is. And the Toast Notification Manager directly works with the OS. And for that, it is necessary that you either create an application shortcut by uh, on your development machine or you update the application shortcut, what I'm doing right now. Otherwise, the notification doesn't work, but that is a Windows thing. Um, I can now edit notifications. I'll just add one. It's got some pretty fine text in there. Um, and um, let me close that one again. What I can do now is uh, change pretty much one line of code, which was in the timer event. And instead of using the... Um, um, the alert control here, I'm now going to use the Toast Notifications Manager. And for that, I will comment out this and put another line in there so it will show that notification. And um, before I actually start running the application, I need to make one change on my machine. And that is, I need to make the screen that we're all looking at the primary screen because the notifications only appear on the primary screen. Uh, I have a couple of uh, screens attached to this uh, computer. So um, I will change my primary uh, screen and you'll see that because the, notif the taskbar is showing up right now. So uh, let's run the application again and uh, see what happens. So after a couple of seconds, you won't see that uh, alert that we used to have, but instead we'll get this Windows notification. So this Windows toast. And I can close this one down and another one will show up and what you actually see, if I open this one up, you'll see that they also show up in the action center. So I'd say this is also a very cool feature. And we have documentation because you can not only use the simple text, but you can use forms, you can use whatever in those notifications. So a really slick feature. Um, so, yeah, another thing that we can do. Let me close down this uh, this application and uh, clean up all those events and also disable this uh, timer in case we, we're going to run the application again. 
Um, and I'll switch back my primary display. So I won't bother you with all the stuff which is running in my taskbar. Um, yeah, so with this, um, well, uh this is this is pretty much uh what i wanted to show you and uh, also um yeah i i hope that if we recap it let me put that on so you, you've been seeing how to use the calendar control to change over in something incredibly cool with like a little flashlight to hover over the numbers and stuff uh, i have removed the ribbon control i used the button area on top of the form instead Again, that is depending on your UI, whether you want to do it. Um, I have shown you the acrylic options, though, yeah, because of the GoToWebinar software, it's not really clear to see. Um, the only thing that I didn't show you is the tile view instead of the grid view, and I can show you that in just a minute. Um, and I showed you the office navigation bar. Let me quickly show you how the tile view looks. I can do that in just a minute. Um, one of the things in the grid is a new view. So what I can do if I change the view, I can convert it to a tile view. And this looks slightly different. Um, again, this is not... Uh, for everybody, but it's just another way of presenting. I want to have a whole bunch of tiles like this, and before I see anything, I need to use the tile template designer. And in this case, I can drop on a couple of fields here, like this and like this. Um, I can actually um, uh, resize this stuff as well. So I could say stretch horizontal, or set it to true. I could even change the font of this particular item, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and once I close this and run the application again, you will notice that we have a uh, different view of our data. And in this case, let me put it over in the designer. I mean, I did a really quick design, obviously, but what is interesting to mention is that you will now need to scroll horizontally because this is touch optimized. And you can imagine if I change a couple of colors in the grid, it will just look as slick as uh, the rest of the application. And so this is another way of presenting your data. And yeah, with this, uh, I hope I've given you enough ideas and, 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 and show you how to possibly freshen up your UI on an existing application. Um, yeah, so Amanda, I'm handing things over to you. Um, not sure if there are any questions unanswered. Hey, Don. Um, the team has been doing a bang up job answering all the questions. Um, let's see if there's any left. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. For Milton, he says, is there to, a way to make a spla the splash screen look like Office, say Word 2019? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, that was actually one of the things that was on the to-do list while preparing this webinar, but we decided to uh, not put it in the webinar because of time. I mean, you've see me go through a whole bunch of options but yes we have uh, something for that as well um yeah i'd say drop me an email or or use support uh file a ticket at support and we'll get you uh to the right documentation on that that's uh we have that as well okay uh let's see from uh, you have such a great set of icons that you use for your demos. Are you using a commercial icon library? Absolutely not. Well, <laughs> well, well, yes, it is commercial, but it is from DevExpress. If you upgrade to the latest version of DevExpress, you'll get all those amazing icons with it. I mean, the designer, the, the icon selector in Visual Studio is part of the DevExpress WinForms product. The icons 
that are in there that you saw, they are part of the WinForms product. So yes, if you renew your license, install the latest version, etc., you'll have this and you can distribute those images with your application, no problem. So yes, they are commercial, but they are from us and we're giving them to you. All right, that's it. Let's see, what control should I use to display a couple of hundred thumbnail images if I want to have direct direct X acceleration? Uh, if you want to scroll through a, uh, a bunch of images, well, you could obviously use the grid view for that. I mean, you've just been showing me, uh, I've just been showing you the tile view, for instance. So instead of putting text in there, you can put images in there as well. I mean, the grid is a very versatile control uh, with a very wide variety of views. Um, I'm pretty sure that it is that there is something to do the images as well, and that will be done using DirectX. All right, Don, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. All right, all right, everybody. Like I mentioned before, today's webinar will be made available later on our DevExpress YouTube channel. And while you're on our YouTube channel, please subscribe and ring the bell so that you are notified whenever we release new content. You will also get a follow-up email with a link to this webinar recording. And that is it for this one. Thanks so much to Don. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.